Hi there, welcome to the Fierce Factor Podcast. I'm your host, Kaylee Lindholm. And I think it's time for us women to shift the conversation in business and step into our feminine leadership to do the most iconic work the aesthetic industry has ever seen. Each week, I'll be bringing a powerful dose of strategy, sarcasm, solutions, and sass that will rev up your creativity and ignite your brilliance as you link arms with me along our shared path of personal and professional growth in 20 minutes or less. Let's go. Hello, leader. Welcome back to the Fierce Factor podcast. It's Kaylee here, and you are tuning in to episode 103. In today's episode, we are going to discuss a defining intersection that can be the make or break of your sustainable success as a business owner. And if you're a provider and also the owner of your business, or if you are a technician who wants to own a business, this podcast episode is for you. And let me tell you, I record this today with the utmost love and respect for you, goddess. Because working in a business, that has its own set of challenges. But working in and owning that business is a whole different beast. I know this from experience. I spent over a decade working in corporate America before making the leap myself, taking my skills, experience, and expertise to meet the demand of the industry for business and marketing education for aesthetic practices. And as I've shared in many episodes of this podcast, my journey has not been linear. In fact, so many of the challenges I faced early on and continue to experience are ones I recognize every single day in the work we do with our clients. But if there's one thing that has underpinned the success I've had as an entrepreneur, it's not, in fact, the experience or skills or expertise. It's my commitment to building a world-class business And through that commitment, the discipline of learning to master the art of entrepreneurship. I was thinking back to about a year ago or so, I had a call with a DNP injector who owned a multi location med spa. She was experiencing painful staff turnover. Thank you, COVID, and wanted to talk with me about a strategy for rebuilding her organization. And of course, she felt vulnerable to competition. And the managerial aspect of running her business was really burning her out. She didn't want to lead people. She didn't want to micromanage the day-to-day operations. And she certainly did not want to deal with hiring and firing staff. So I suggested to her that we do some work together in our academy and really invest in learning and implementing the five core business milestones to building a scalable and sellable business that can run independently. But she didn't want to invest the one hour per week into working on her business. In fact, she asked if she could put someone else in her company through the academy so she didn't have to. (laughs) She just didn't want to deal with it. And I left that call dumbfounded. I couldn't help but wonder why in the world has this woman started a business? Since that call, I've had several similar conversations with business owners who are either tired of running their business or many who are tired of doing the thing they were most passionate about, in many cases, treating patients, because the burden of the business has become too overwhelming and has sucked the joy out of the experience of growth. And believe me, I've been there. I've been to that place of feeling the heaviness of responsibility for my business. It's growth. It's payroll. It's the well-being of its employees and customers. It's a lot. The reality is business ownership is not for everyone. In fact, it's not for the majority. And I want to really help you understand what becoming the CEO of your business and life really requires of you and help you understand what kind of rewards await as you cross the bridge to entrepreneurial freedom if you put in the work to practice and develop the skills of becoming a world-class leader, if. When you look on Instagram, it sure seems like the majority of business owners out there are crushing it, eternally busy making videos, advertising long patient wait lists for access to them, booming training academies, growing teams, influencer agreements, speaking opportunities. I wonder why we don't see more injectors on the Forbes top 50 list. Leader, don't get sucked into building a sustainably profitable business looks like. Take it from me. 
I've peeked behind the curtain into hundreds of business financials, and believe me, they don't all look like that. In fact, generally speaking, most multi-million dollar business owners are not millionaires. In general, it will take making a million dollars in your business to become a $300,000 earner after expenses and taxes. And when I start working with many entrepreneurs, they're not even collecting a paycheck. So if you left your hospital or corporate job as an employee for financial freedom, keep in mind that you will be the owner of your job until you make the decision to build a truly scalable business. In fact, even if your business is lucrative enough to pay you the same salary you were making before, remember that you are responsible for dispersing that payroll. What I see all too often is a very talented provider who has a booked schedule and she thinks, huh, if I did this on my own, I could keep every dollar that I earn versus handing it off to someone else. And in many cases, that's absolutely true. But what they fail to realize in that moment of inspiration is that there is a cost to entrepreneurship. And that cost is the eminent transition from injector to entrepreneur to CEO. Now, let me be clear, this transition can happen more quickly for some than others. I've seen injectors open their doors and go from brand new to fully booked and building a team in months. Others may be running their side hustle for years with one foot in and one foot out waiting for some spontaneous ready button to appear before they develop the confidence to dive headfirst into their entrepreneurial journey. And from my experience, there are really three benchmarks to cross to make this transition possible. And we're going to discuss these three milestones today. Number one, getting yourself emotionally ready. Number two, setting up your systems. And number three, becoming her. Regardless of how long you've technically had a business, you might still ask yourself the million dollar question. Do you identify as an entrepreneur or a provider? Do you spend more time working in your business than on your business? Are you hungry for more time to think, plan, create, and design the plan for future growth of your business? How do you spend your days, your weeks, your months, your years? In his best-selling business development book, The E-Myth, Michael Gerber states, most businesses fail because they are not started by entrepreneurs, but they are founded by technicians suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. A carpenter finds herself possessed by the urge to start her own business, becomes a contractor, and then goes to work doing it, doing it, doing it. A hairstylist finds herself compelled to start her own business opens a hair salon, and then goes to work doing it, doing it, doing it. An attorney finds himself possessed by the need to start his own business, forms his own law practice, and then goes to work doing it, doing it, doing it. A cook is taken by the impulse to start his own business, opens his own restaurant, and then goes to work doing it, doing it, doing it. You get the point. Insert injector, insert esthetician, insert physician. Insert nurse practitioner. Here's the point. These skills, experience, and expertise don't make a technician a successful business owner. And he quotes, doing the work of a business has nothing to do with building a business that works. In fact, so many of our clients come to us feeling burdened by their business. They feel trapped. Our clients will tell me that they took the risk of starting their business for the luxury of doing what they love without guidelines, restrictions, and red tape. They were eager to challenge themselves within the agency of something they felt passionate about. They wanted to impact more people, make more money, and do it on their own damn time. Many of our clients, and perhaps you as well, have worked in a hospital for a corporation or in partnership with another provider who told you that you are welcome to run your business like an independent professional. Do your best work. Be you. You probably even loved a lot about your experiences, but you had the itch for more. You knew that if you could just release the invisible handcuffs, you could make an imprint of tremendous magnitude. And here you are, now finding yourself in a place where the very freedoms you created for yourself, the autonomy ensued, is the very thing that is preventing you from getting out of the day-to-day service delivery in your business and fully stepping into your role as a CEO. The key here is knowing the simple distinction 
that there is a profound difference between working in your business and working on your business. You've heard the saying, what got you here won't take you there. Well, the reverse is also true. Most business owners set out on their entrepreneurial journey with passion and ambition to build a business that will become their legacy. They're eager, they're willing to take risks and strained in many ways. And then one day reality kicks in, roadblocks, setbacks, unwelcome challenges, drama, unexpected adversities, and they lose that uninhibited confidence and fierce belief that their vision would become a reality no matter what. They become scared to take risks. They lose faith in themselves and others, and they lose patience in the process. And instead of staying on course, they try different things by barely dipping their toe in and just never going all in on that single thing. Can you relate? This can look like a business owner who is numbingly indecisive because different influences in her life give her conflicting advice. Or a business owner who invests hundreds of thousands of dollars into a device, into marketing, or into another provider, but doesn't have immediate success and decides to buy the next shiny new thing the next year to make up for quote-unquote lost revenue. Stepping into the role of a CEO requires tapping into an unshakable confidence in making a decision, or shall I say taking a legitimate risk, and believing without a doubt it will be successful and putting all your energy and resources into that initiative until it is. Leader, treading lightly just won't cut it. Perhaps you feel like no one can do it like you, and this belief is keeping you from allowing yourself the space and freedom that another provider or business manager could bring to your life. As an entrepreneur, it will truly be about shifting your source of fulfillment from what you're able to do as a provider with your hands on your patients to what you're able to build in magnitude as a CEO? Why do you ask? Great question. Most often, an aesthetic wellness founder will build a business that is dependent upon her. She dedicates herself to serving patients day in and day out, often at the expense of her own leisure or family time, and at the end of the road, doesn't have much to show for it because her business is not worth much of anything. Let's be real, there's little equity to show for a business that relies upon her without her. An entrepreneur, however, builds a company that liberates her. It allows her to sell her business for multiple millions of dollars and take that equity to reinvest into the next big idea she has, into her future, into reinvention of herself. And the point is not about building a bigger business. You don't have to have an eight location clinic for it to be worth something significant. It's about building a better business that has systems, structure, and a team who can provide you with lucrative cash reserves, emotional and spiritual wholeness, and boundless energy, and do the things that you are most passionate about, even if that is injecting forever. But this process begins with you as a leader preparing yourself to become the woman capable of achieving this kind of success. It's not about how, it's about the who. Once you're emotionally ready to transition into CEO territory, then it's time to get your systems in place. I remember hearing the word systems when I first started my business six years ago, and it sounded like, this is like the worst sound to me, nails scratching across a chalkboard. (laughs) As a creative visionary, structure for me felt like being in jail. I don't want structure. I want freedom. (laughs) I want to make decisions on the fly. I want to move quickly. I want to be free. It wasn't long before I learned this critical lesson as I transitioned from a busy, overworked consultant to a CEO in my company, that systems will actually set you free. Systems are like bumpers in a bowling alley. They make sure everything moves in the right direction and protects the business from unintentional slip-ups. Systems are designed to not only automate and consistently replicate and improve the client experience in your business, but they also ensure that your team and future team members are very clear on the way things need to be done. In our academy, we spend an entire month of the year helping our clients build out standard operating procedures for their business, creating a clear client journey, and developing a formula and system to keep their SOPs routinely updated. The point of this is to document and save detailed instructions on how to carry out a task so that Any team member can carry out that task correctly every time. 
I hear all the time, I lost my front desk or this employee left and we're vulnerable now. I have to hurry up and hire someone. What we teach our clients is to have these systems in place to build a business that is so buttoned up that grandma could come in and do any job by reading a basic instruction manual. Transitioning from provider to CEO means leaning in on these tasks, embracing the grind of building out systems. And yes, it's literally a grind. And P.S., it's not something that you want to outsource. And believe me, plenty of people will take your money for it. The only way to build and systematize a business that does it your way in marriage with your distinct brand is to not take the shortcut of adopting someone else's standard operating procedures, but instead architecting your own and memorializing them. Yes, this takes time. Yes, this is a working on the business task. And yes, that is the point. And finally, stepping into CEO role in your business means eliminating outside influences, insourcing approval, and stepping into the woman who is worthy of abundance and is already enough. No more worrying about where clients will come from. No more losing sleep over drama employees or clients. No more rushing and reactive decision-making. No more longing for more time. Transitioning into CEO means to love, appreciate, and feel gratitude for the past hardwired versions of yourself while letting them take the back seat and instead leading with the essence of you who has already become her. I recorded a very intimate reflections episode last year as I shared some of my experiences through this personal growth process in episode 75. It's called Reflections, Befriending My Multiple Personalities. That would be a great episode to go head back and listen to after this one. Leader, today you have a choice to make. Stay a provider in your business and work endlessly at this level or transition into the CEO you are capable of becoming. It starts by committing to investing in the skills and the practice of leadership of being truthful about what you are willing to sacrifice in order to experience the abundance of wealth, health, and prosperity as an entrepreneur. If you're ready to make this transition to move from overworked provider to a bossed up CEO, I'd like to invite you to jump on a call with me to learn more about our flagship program, the Pop Aesthetic Leadership Academy. This business incubator is the one and only aesthetic business development program that helps female leaders in the aesthetic and wellness industry, master the five core business milestones to build a deeply satisfying, lucrative, freedom-based business that stands the test of time. And in this one-year program, you'll leave with uniquely branded and marketed, customized bundled procedures, a clear system for nurturing leads from your social media to your bank account, a simple framework for systematizing your practice, a defined brand positioning strategy, a clear customer journey and creation of standard operating procedures in every area of the business and direct messaging to your most valuable buyers. Additionally, and really most importantly, you'll be joining a community of badass female CEOs and aesthetic wellness who are making big moves in their business. A group of women who will uplift you, energize you, and support you as you unleash and catapult to your next level. If this sounds like something you might be interested in learning more about, you can schedule a no-pressure call to learn more about this program at klcconsultants.com forward slash join. Once you apply, you'll be sent a very brief questionnaire to tell us more about your stage of business, your growth goals, really to help us prepare for our call. Our goal leader is to make sure it's the right fit for both of us, meaning if we're not 100% confident that this program will transform your business and life, then there are certainly other programs that we have and we will guide you in the right direction. So there's really nothing to lose. Leader, thank you for tuning in today. Listen, if you are in this mucky space of making this transition, I see you. I am here for you. I applaud you. Keep your head down. Stay focused on the task at hand. You got this. Wait, before you go. Hey, if you're vibing with this conversation and you want to join me on my mission to help 100 inspiring and intentional women cross the next million dollar milestone in their business this year, or leader, maybe you want to become one of them, 
head over to Facebook and join our free community, The Fierce Factor Society. Over there, we're taking this conversation to an elevated level. Get access to resource guides, podcast supplements, guideposts, and direct communication with me, my expert team, and of course, a society of fierce women making big moves and disrupting the status quo in aesthetic wellness. You can link directly through the show notes or head to Facebook and search the Fierce Factor Society. See you there, goddess.